Welcome to Glass of Bubbly. I'm Oliver Walkie here interviewing Stuart Wilde about his new book, Vineyard Vacations. We're going to find out a bit about his book and a lot more about his life. So give us uh, an explanation of what Vineyard Vacations is about. It's a synopsis of about nearly 50, nearly 50 vineyards that have somewhere where you can stay overnight. So that if you want to drive there, you've still got safety. Uh, it varies from uh, campsites to shepherd huts to self-service accommodation up to four-star hotels. So, and it covers the whole of the country as far north as Yorkshire, as far west as Cornwall and of course includes Kent and Sussex. Okay, have you been to all of these places? Or of them? I haven't been to all of them, I've been to a few of them. I've not necessarily stayed at the actual accommodation that's there, but I have been to the vineyards and seen what the accommodation is like. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how did you get into the wine industry? I got made redundant as an architect. Uh, that was in 92, 94 I started working in a wine shop and since then it's developed. Uh, I won't say I've been around the world but I've certainly been to Australia, uh, sorry to New Zealand and I've been to Argentina and Uruguay uh, that's apart from other countries and in um, New Zealand and Argentina and Italy I've seen how vineyards can accommodate people that want to come and stay and use the vineyard as a basis for um, tourism so the uh, idea of putting together the locations in this country was the source for the book How do you think England is comparing to the rest of the world in wine tourism? For the cellar door it's doing pretty well. For the accommodation overnight very poorly because most places are just having one or two spaces whereas <coughs> excuse me, whereas the uh, New Zealanders and the Argentinians are going for purpose-built accommodation that is three, four, even five star. Okay, wow. Okay. And this, uh, this is your second wine book? This is the second one. The first one was three years ago, which was on English sparkling wine. Again, it was a selection of wines. It was in no way was it complete. It was only a few of the vineyards, some of the vineyards that I'd been to, some of the vineyards that I knew of, some of the vineyards that I'd met at wine tastings, and a little bit about the history of the vineyard as well as the wine itself. How do you think English sparkling wine is comparing to the rest of the world, like other traditional methods, sparkling wines and green champagne? Those that are being good at it are doing very well. Uh, in fact, I was talking to Black Chalk, uh, to Jacob Leadley the other day, and he was saying it's a lot easier to export English sparkling wine than it is to actually sell it at home. So obviously we were doing quite well. I, I did an interview with him recently and asked him about the future of English sparkling wine and he's uh, all positive. Oh yes, he's time. very positive, yeah. As is, well, the ones that I have met, uh, Dervis Sucru, uh, Jacob of course, and um, uh, Corinne at, um, uh, come on, where's Corinne Seeley? Exton Park. Exton Park, that's right. And um, America at uh, Osbrook. 
although uh, I think she looks for more after the ground and, I'm, and Nick looks after the wine. And, okay. uh, I know they, yeah, I know Oz is particularly fond of theirs. He's, he's doing their summer garden party for the second year this year. So Nice. <laughs> and do you have, uh, maybe controversial to say, but do you have a favourite English sparkling wine or at least a favourite moment that you've enjoyed an English sparkling wine? Uh, yes. And funny enough, this was at night in by. When uh, my wife uh, was at one of their uh, open days, for want of a better description, when they actually opened for tastings, and uh, I couldn't get a ticket. So I was wandering uh, around the grounds, which of course you're not supposed to do in night in by, and uh, met uh, Eric Helena's wife who said, well, we can't have you wandering around without something to drink, and promptly offered me a glass of their sparkling rosé. So uh, that was uh, a moment to, of a reflection. <laughs> Sounds like a really nice moment. Uh, yes, it was. She was a very, she was a very pleasant lady. Scots lass. <laughs> so you brought with you an English wine that we'll try. Can you tell us anything about them? Uh, Rydale is a small vineyard, 14 acres, they've been there about 14 years, they're just north of York. This is a Solaris, uh, which is the, one of their two whites. They do a Yorkshire Lass and they do a Yorkshire Lad. Uh, they do a Sparkling, which is made for them at Half Petty Green. And, uh, I like it. I don't know whether you will. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. It's got a nice open air English sort of country garden aroma to it. It's very welcoming. I think that's very pleasant. Very nice and easy to drink. It's actually travelled quite well as too. So you've just got that sharpness of fruit. Nicely on it, nicely, you know, uh, the, the, uh, yes, have that on its own, just so you don't need it with food. It's a nice, easy one, good aftertaste, plenty of length. Yeah, nice, nice zestiness, gooseberries, mm -hmm. green apples. Be nice on a, uh, like a, a garden party. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what have you got, 14 acres, I, not a vast quantity, of course, and everything is sold locally. You can't get it in the shops, you have to get it from the vineyard, more or less. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Stuart, for speaking to me. Before we end this, would you mind signing my copy of your book? No, I would certainly do that. Now then, Oliver is... oh. <laughs> Anyway, well, your man. Thank you very much, Stuart. So check out his book, Vineyard Vacations. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.